Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, July 1st. I'm Stephanie Haney. Welcome back to 3 News Now. Thank you for joining us for the top headlines from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. I'm so glad that you're here with me today to talk about what's impacting all of us here in Northeast Ohio. And because it's July 1st, that means we are officially in the second half of 2020. So here's hoping the second half of 2020 brings us great things, maybe a little less tough than the first half of 2020, which I know has been tough for a lot of us. Now, as I say that, I want you to remember that this first story happened last night. So this goes in the first half of 2020 category. Yesterday, there was a man arrested after pointing a loaded gun at protesters in North Canton. These were protesters that were led by the Ohio Community Coalition. They were marching against police brutality in North Canton. They walked through the intersection of North Main Street and Maple Street. This was around 6.45 p.m. They were blocking traffic, according to police reports. And then just before 7 p.m., a man in a black pickup truck who police have identified as a person named Dustin Regan, he went around the stop traffic in his pickup truck and he was confronted then by protesters at that point. Now, according to reports, he got out of his truck and he pointed a loaded weapon at the crowd. Luckily, no one was hurt. He was taken into custody pretty quickly and he now faces charges of reckless operation, aggregated, aggravated menacing, and carrying a concealed weapon. So remember, that's in the first half of 2020. That was yesterday, so that's behind us. So let's move forward in the second half of 2020 with some good news. We do expect to hear from Governor Mike DeWine on Thursday on a plan for reopening schools. This is what he told us in his press conference on Monday. He says they continue to work on plans to help the schools reopen and keep Ohioans healthy and safe at work and in their daily lives while the coronavirus remains with us. So he says the focus here is now learning to live with the coronavirus. We are now in that phase of dealing with COVID-19 and we're working on the next phase, the next plans, which they hope to announce later this week. We're also expected to hear more about those seven metrics that he mentioned. These are different metrics that health officials are using to monitor what to do here in Ohio as we move forward, as we continue to monitor those COVID-19 cases. He said, we want people to have confidence in what we're looking at and what we're relaying to people and that those metrics so far have triggered alerts for Montgomery and Hamilton counties with growing concerns in Cuyahoga County as well, but not quite rising to the level of the concerns they're seeing in Montgomery and Hamilton counties. Now, in the last week, Ohio has seen COVID-19 infections rising. We'll talk about that 21-day average here in just a moment, but we will have that press conference, of course, from Governor Mike DeWine tomorrow on Thursday, July 2nd. That'll stream live on WKYC.com and in our WKYC app. So let's talk about the numbers right now here in the state of Ohio. These are based on the numbers that we got yesterday at 2 p.m. from the Ohio Department of Health. So we talk about that 21-day average for cases. Now, as you all know, the way averages work is if you have an extremely low number or an extremely high number, it's gonna pull that average that way. And our 21-day average is going up. At the beginning of June, our 21-day average of newly reported COVID-19 cases was 325. Yesterday, the last day of June, that was all the way up to 601, and that was after we saw a week of a very high number of cases here in Ohio. Yesterday, we saw 743 new cases of COVID-19 reported. That was up from 737 the previous day, and then if we look back to last Friday, there were 987 new cases reported. So that brings our total number of cases here in Ohio dating back to March 9th when we first learned of COVID-19 being here to 51,789. Now, keep in mind, Dr. Amy Acton, when she was operating in her role as a director of the Ohio Department of Health, she did tell us that based on antibody testing, we do know that COVID-19 was likely here in Ohio as early as January, but these numbers date back to March 9th because that's when we first became aware and then first started tracking those numbers. The total number of deaths was also up yesterday here in Ohio. There were 45 new deaths reported yesterday, bringing that total now to 2,863. When we talk about the 21-day average for new reported deaths, that's 21. So that 45 number is higher than that 21-day average. So if we continue to see numbers like that, it will 
pull that average up. The total number of hospitalizations newly reported yesterday was 93, bringing that number to now 7,839 here in the state of Ohio. And then the number of ICU admissions newly reported yesterday, that stayed steady with 15 new ICU admissions, bringing that total to 1,994. Now, as we talk about learning to live with COVID-19 and monitor these cases, we do now know that there has been an outbreak identified at Putin Bay. Right now, we know that at least eight people, six from Lucas County and two from Ottawa County, who were at Putin Bay from June 17th through the 21st. Again, that's June 17th through the 21st. So check your calendar, think back, remember where you were those days. These people have now tested positive for COVID-19. We saw lots of footage of what the situation was like in Putin Bay. There were packed bars, restaurants were full, people were everywhere, shoulder to shoulder, not necessarily practicing that physical distancing and not wearing a lot of masks. So health officials say that the individuals tested positive have been confirmed to have been at the Commodore Hotel, the Mist, and Mr. Ed's. Not to mention all the places they had to go between those spaces in order to get to their destination. So think long and hard if you were at Putin Bay from June 17th through 21st. If you were at any of those locations, you may have come in contact with any of those people. People from the Toledo, Toledo Lucas County and the Ottawa County Health Departments are asking people to self-quarantine for 14 days if you were at Putin Bay from June 17th through the 21st and also to watch for symptoms of COVID-19. If you do have symptoms, which remember, those can develop up to 14 days after being exposed to COVID-19. You should seek immediate testing for COVID-19. But if you have no symptoms, it's not being recommended at this time that you request testing. We do have a list of testing sites in Lucas County. That's on our website at WKYC.com and also on the WKYC app. Talking about sports, let's take a look at the Cleveland Browns. What they are doing is they are serving, they are surveying season ticket holders about their comfort level in returning to First Energy Stadium during the COVID-19 pandemic. So we are not far away from what is supposed to be the start of the NFL preseason that was supposed to start for the Browns here on August 15th. The NFL season opener is scheduled right now for September 10th, but the Pro Football Hall of Fame game this year, which is the unofficial kickoff of the preseason for the NFL, has been not happening. It's not happening this year. They're going to have the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers play next year. So there will be no Hall of Fame game this year. There will be no Hall of Fame enshrinement ceremony this year. All of those activities have been postponed to next year for 2021. So that game not happening is an interesting indicator for what might happen for the NFL. So right now, with all of those questions, the Cleveland Browns sent out a 23-question survey to their season ticket holders to try and gauge people's comfort level in returning to First Energy Stadium. So some of the questions on that survey included, how do you feel about the current COVID-19 situation? What's your biggest concern regarding COVID-19? And with proper health and safety protocols, are you comfortable attending games at First Energy Stadium this season? They also asked fans about their flexibility with moving seats what safety precautions people are using when they do go out to public places, and also how willing people are to participate in wearing masks at First Energy Stadium. The Cleveland Browns have said that the confidential survey will be kept confidential, the feedback will be kept confidential, and they don't plan to use this for any individual marketing efforts, but it is definitely interesting to note that they are seeking out information and seeing how comfortable people feel with possibly returning to the stadium and what people would be willing to do to possibly make that happen for the 2020 NFL season. It will be interesting to see what happens there. And of course, we'll be watching very closely what happens with Major League Baseball and professional basketball, which we are supposed to see back this month under very different circumstances. Here's an update to that national story about Russian bounty allegations. Military or intelligence officials told the New York Times anonymously because they were not at liberty to speak, they said. So they spoke anonymously to the New York Times saying that Russian officials were bribing militants in Afghanistan to kill U.S. soldiers. And today, President Donald Trump is calling that fake news. He says that the news stories were made up to damage him and the Republican Party. He also said the secret source probably does not exist, just like the story himself. And he 
back into the New York Times to reveal the source. Of course, it's a common practice to not reveal an anonymous source if there's no other way that they are able to reveal that information. And the New York Times source on this was anonymous, saying that Russian officials did offer bounties to militants in Afghanistan in order to kill U.S. soldiers. Now, people in Congress have been asking for answers about this, and Democrats are accusing President Donald Trump of bowing to Russian President Vladimir Putin at the risk of U.S. soldiers' lives. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden also said that it would be a terrible thing to learn that this is actually a failure that happened on the part of President Donald Trump. There was conversation that President Donald Trump said that he was not briefed, and then there was conversation that said that he was briefed. So White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany said on Tuesday that he actually had been briefed on the intelligence about these alleged Russian bounties. And this was after she said that he had not been briefed because it had not been verified. So then McEnany also added that there are reservations within the Intelligence Committee on the veracity of the allegations. She also said to make no mistake that the president will protect the troops. So today, President Donald Trump is saying that the actual bounty allegations themselves are not true. Here's a fun fact that we're going to end things on for you today. It's Bobby Bonilla Day. Now, if you don't know what that is, Bobby Bonilla has not played in Major League Baseball since 2001, but he's been getting paid every year on July 1st since 2011, and this is a pretty sweet deal. So he gets paid from the New York Mets $1.19 million every July 1st. He didn't even end his career with the New York Mets, by the way. He ended his career with the Cardinals. This is because in 2000, the Mets agreed to buy out the remaining $5.9 million on Bonilla's contract. So, about $6 million. They could have paid him about $6 million in 2000 to buy out that contract, but they didn't. They opted instead to make annual payments of about $1.2 million for 25 years starting on July 1st, 2011, and that goes through 2035, when Bobby Bonilla will be 72 years old. So, he's making a lot of money. This is called a deferred money contract, and the lawyer in me is so happy for him. Not so happy for the New York Mets, but it's working out very well for Bobby Bonilla. So, let that be a lesson to all of us, to be just a little bit more like Bobby Bonilla in our lives. Happy Bobby Bonilla Day. That brings us to an end of your 3 News Now early update here for Wednesday, July 1st. We'll be back at 2 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. I'll see you back here then. I'm Stephanie Haney.